Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of The Studio. My name is Adam. It's time for yet another highly requested vibraphone mallet review. You guys have been asking for this one for ages. It's the one and only Tony Miscelli series from Mike Bolter. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Artifact Percussion, Zero Gravity Percussion, Rob Utomo, and Taylor Murphy. Thank you so much for joining the Studio VIP team. And today's featured studio artist is John Cox. Thank you so much for joining the Studio Artist team. And if you'd like to become a Studio VIP or Studio Artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash M10 or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show. Okay, you guys have been wanting this mallet series for a long, long time. And I've had this in almost all of my videos. I've always mispronounced the name of them. So today, we're gonna set the record straight. His name, confirmed, is Tony Micelli. As in, I wanna sell you something. It's not Michelli, it's not Michelli, it's not Mrs. Susie. Tony, if you're watching, I'm so sorry that I've butchered your name so many times in the past. Oh no! Okay, now that we got that out of the way, I've had these mallets for the last three years. Since 2015, it was when my friend Tom from Whopper Tom, if you're watching, shout out to you. Because I wanted a mallet series that was easy to control, I wanted something that was more jazzy, and I wanted a mallet series that looked cool. And then Tom was using these mallets to play the Sejourné Vibraphone Concerto. So I basically bought a pair the day after he started learning it. <laughs> so yes, this is my personal pair of Tony Maselli mallets. These were not sent to me, they are not samples, and therefore this review is not sponsored at all by Mike Bolter. I just really like these mallets. So let's start up with the model lineup. Just like what I said in the other vibraphone mallet review, vibe mallets don't really have many hardnesses like marimba because they don't really need to have that sort of graduated setup. Unlike marimba where it definitely sounds very different at the bottom and very different at the top, vibraphone tends to sound almost the same at both ends of the instrument. Also because it's really difficult to have those subtle differences in hardnesses. For example, marimba mallet series is sometimes go up to 10 hardnesses, but vibraphone mallets, especially jazz mallets, probably only go up to one, two, or three hardnesses. And the Tony Maselli series is no different. There's only two models. There's the 46R, which is this set that I'm holding here, and the 46AR, which is a warmer and softer version of this. And sometimes I've been tempted to buy the 46AR, but I haven't quite done it yet. Now, one thing I've noticed about the price of marimba mallets and vibe mallets is that marimba mallets tend to be way more expensive than vibe mallets. I'm guessing it's because there's more yarn on the heads and there's more detail put into like the quality of the core. Da -da 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 -da. But it's quite crazy. I'd say this is like a mid to high tier a vibraphone mallet and it's about 34 US dollars but a marimba mallet of the same sort of prestige level is about 40 to 60 dollars which is ah but yes it means that these mallets can be had by a lot of people it's relatively affordable I'd say it's right in the middle of what most vibraphone mallets cost next let's move on to build quality and design so the first thing that drew me to these mallets was of course that head <laughs> It's a rainbow multicolored concoction of happiness amongst a sea of monochromatic, boring vibraphone mallets. I mean, how many vibraphone mallets do you know that are just big circular vibraphone mallets with one color? Usually it's blue. You might also notice the heads are oblong shaped, not round, which generally tends to give a more articulate sound, a more bright sound. And the heads are not squeezable, so they definitely pass the studio squeeze test. They're quite resilient, they're quite rock solid, they're quite small, so... I don't think these will die anytime soon. In fact, I've used these mallets for three years now and I've used them for a myriad of different purposes including jazz, including contemporary stuff, including hitting it really hard. <laughs> And I would say the wear pattern after three years is kind of there, like you can see the white outline but it hasn't affected the sound in any way and the mallet head is still very robust. So relatively strong. And then if you move down onto the shaft, you'll notice a huge amount of text, including the Mike Bolter logo, the words Tony Miscelli model, the words USA going vertically, as well as 46R, the model designation. And you don't get the banana sticker, that is my own personal edition. But then when you go down towards the bottom of the shaft, you start to notice, oh, it's one of those. What I mean by that is one of my pet hates of rattan is these sandy black bottom end parts where they just fill the rattan with this black material because the inside of rattan is not pleasant, it's usually quite sharp. Like I've seen a lot of instances where mallet shafts like this are very very rough at the bottom but this one is like semi rough. So is it a case of smooth ends make friends? I'd say it's kind of smooth ends. 
kind of make friends. So at least it's rounded, it hasn't really bothered me over three years, but if it's something that bothers you, might be something to consider. And the other thing I will say is the rattan itself, although it is quite strong, it does tend to flex a lot. Like you can see actually, this mallet is not completely straight, it's definitely bent. And it started bending pretty early on in its lifespan. I've been trying to bend it back every time I use it, and that works a little bit, but not really. Again, it hasn't really bothered me that much, but it does kind of make my mallets feel a little bit weird. If I play it like this, the bend is going upwards, and actually it goes against my hand. Whereas if I play it like this, the bend is going downwards, and it's going in the correct direction. So it's a bit weird, but I've kind of gotten used to it. Overall though, I think the Tony Micellis are pretty well built, so no serious complaints so far. Okay, now let's talk about the ergonomics. So, are the Tony Micelli mallets heavy? Kind of. I'd say they are kind of heavy for vibraphone mallet standards. Nowhere near as heavy as heavy marimba mallets. I think also the head on this mallet is slightly further up on the shaft. Like, it's not flush with the top of the shaft, which makes it feel more front weighted. Not necessarily heavy, but just leaning towards the front. So when I'm actually hitting the notes, it tends to stay down a little bit more. But again, I think this is quite a minute thing. I think it's a good weight for four mallets. I think it's very easy to control. The length of these mallets, I'd say, is just like a regular vibraphone mallet length, which is good because I don't really like like it when vibe thread mallets tend to be long like marimba mallets like especially the mallets that are converted from existing marimba models into vibraphone mallets they just don't feel right even for a vibraphone amateur like me these mallets are very easy to control they're very easy to dampen with because of the front weighted feel i don't think you can pitch bend with these because they are yarn and they don't really have that sort of contact but you could try and i like that you can use these for both really small strokes as well as really big strokes and because these are bright you can get quite a clear tone just by having a little actuation of the stroke like and finally we get to the sound test. So I filmed this sound test back in September 2017 when I had the one vibe in the studio. I don't have a vibraphone in the studio anymore. So I may look a little bit different. What I'm wearing may look a little bit different. The studio may look a little bit different. And I also don't know what I played in the sound test. So your guess is as good as mine. But if you're enjoying the video so far, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Here is the sound test. So leave a comment below right now. What did you think of the mallets? Did you think they were soft, warm, dark, bright, salty, umami? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. I personally think that even though these mallets are for jazz and obviously Tony Maselli is one of the greatest jazz players around at this time, even though they're for jazz, they can be used for pretty much anything. They're a great all-rounder mallet if you're not sure what vibe mallets you want to use first. And 
I just really like them. But part of me wants to buy the 46 ARs as well because I like that sort of muted sound a little bit more. But these mounts are very clear, very easy to play with. So, do they get the studio seal of approval? Tell me! So yes, I'm very pleased to say the Tony Miscelli mallets from Mike Bolter get the very amazing, very highly coveted, very highly respected award that no one cares about. The studio seal of approval. Gucci down to the side like I'm... If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And if you have any suggestions or anything you want to say to me, please leave a comment below. I would really appreciate it. I definitely reply to all comments, so I'd love to hear from you. And yes, if you haven't already, please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up with my uploads as we are near 9,000 subscribers, which is massive. And thank you so much for all the support for my brand new four and a third octave Marimba Solo Boon. It hasn't even been a week yet at the time of filming this and we've already sold so many copies. So thank you so much for all the support. I really appreciate it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night.